My name's Carl Voss. I'm the CEO of a company called Soft Robotics. Um, and really, I want to talk robots. And so why are we here talking about robots? Why are we talking about robots at Code Commerce? That's really what we're going to talk about for the next couple minutes. So there's two things that are happening right now that are driving this need for automation, particularly in all of commerce, whether you're e-commerce, We've all seen Amazon is making a big play in robotics, or whether you're traditional brick and mortar, and we're actually even gonna talk about retail restaurants and why automation is important to them right now. But the first mega trend we have to talk about is just people. The world is getting older and living longer, and we're not having children at the rate we used to. And why is that important? In China today, the average age in China is one year younger than the average age in Japan. In the US, the fertility rate is below replacement. And today we sit here with the Bureau of Labor Statistics telling us there's one million more job openings than job seekers in the United States. And so how do we get this work done? So that's the first mega trend. The second, which I think Jason does a really good job of bringing up in the podcast, is all of us. Raise your hand. All of us, the consumer. So I remember going to a store, maybe not this old, but similar. Saturday night, I'm in high school, I need a bottle of shampoo, so I drive up to the local store. Maybe they're out of the brand of shampoo. So who's ever had an experience like this? They're out, so I would find someone, an associate, and I would say, can you go in the back and check and see if they have any of my favorite brand of shampoo? And they would come back either with a bottle, thank you, or I'm sorry, we're all out. And what would I do if they were all out? I would buy another bottle. What do we do today when they come back and they say, I'm sorry, we're all out? Come on, you can fess up. We get our phones out and we buy it online because the consumer today is enabled through technology to get what we want, when we want it, how we want it. And so the days of making six bottles of shampoo and you buy what is on the shelf are over. Omnichannel is here, consumer choice is here, and it's something we call consumer-driven supply chain. And so what does it look like today? This is cake mix at Walmart. This, imagine the supply chain of everyone who makes cake mix and ships it to a Walmart warehouse and then it has to get stocked. It is variety. So we've got variety, we've got the consumer demanding more when we want it, how we want it, at the price point we want it, but we have a job labor problem globally. How do we solve this? So traditionally, this is when industries turn to automation. So why have we heard really big news about automation? We had great news yesterday, Spotify bought Six River, very similar to Kiva that Amazon bought. Those are material transport, but we're trying to get to the next mile. So let's talk about robots now. Robots grew up in automotive manufacturing. And what's interesting is robots are very good, they're very dumb, they do one thing very well that you program to do, weld. These, were, these robots are all welding one spot over and over again, same car, all day long, day in and day out. If you ask them to do something different, they fail. Variation is the kryptonite of robots. But I just saw that I can get hundreds of different cake mixes at Walmart, and if Walmart can't hire people to work in their supply chain, who's gonna take care of all of that cake mix? And so this leads us into a very interesting development where we're trying to get robots to interact with things like humans do. It's called dexterous grasping. So what have we done over the years? We've been trying to build this, and this is scary, and this is hard, and it hasn't gotten us anywhere. So we've had decades and decades of robotics research to recreate the hand. The hand is one of the most complex structures in the world. 29 bones, 30-something muscles, 40-plus nerves, all connected to the best vision system, the best computer in the world. And so we have frustrated ourselves in the robotics community. We've damaged items, we've broken cake mix, we've damaged apparel in fast fashion. But why is it so important? Once again, demographics and supply chain efficiency. So where are we today? So here's someone that looks very similar to the Terminator, is we continue these huge efforts to recreate the human hand and we continue with frustration to the point of where someone is informed as Jeff Bezos, who runs what is arguably the second largest robotics company in the world, um, captive to one customer, Amazon, has said we need, you know, within 10 years we're gonna figure this out. What I'll tell you is we're doing it the wrong way. We've tried to solve this problem the wrong way is instead of looking at the human hand, is there a better analog, is there a better inspiration, something that, that is much more simple than the human hand, probably doesn't have a brain, has a really bad vision system, but can pick anything up. And so where that takes us is Dr. George Whitesides, about 10 years ago at Harvard University, looked at the octopus. He's not a roboticist, he's a chemist, and said, with polymer science, silicone rubbers for you and I, 
and a little bit of pneumatic pressure and a little bit of hydraulics, let's build a robotic octopus. And what that has done is fundamentally changed the way robots interact with items every day. And it's making a lot of this robotic automation in uh, e-commerce, brick and mortar supply chains a reality today. So can we go ahead and roll the tape, please? So what you're gonna see in the background are some examples of this. You can see this octopus-inspired tentacle running. Traditionally, what we would do is we would teach and train and deep learn all these items. To deep learn a single item is the carbon footprint of three to five cars for their lifetime. Amazon has tens of millions of items in inventory. It's just not tangible, so we've gotta figure out a better way. And so you can see this system working here. So now I'm gonna give you a tip. Whenever you see a robotic video, what's the first thing you should ask? Where's the robotics folks? Is it staged? Can I see the raw footage? Because the majority of robotic demos are one-offs and staged. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna forget that and we're gonna do something live in, on stage for you today. So I wanna introduce Harley Green, who's our applications engineer manager from Soft Robotics. Come on up, Harley. So a round of applause for Harley. Thanks. So Harley's been nice enough to set up a robot for us um, today. It's a small, lightweight robot, but really what we're gonna do is there's no vision system here. You go back to what Jeff Bezos said. We need better machine vision. We need to recreate the human brain. We need to re recreate the human eyes. Evolution took a while, and it's just gonna pick up the widest range of objects you see. It's gonna interact with all these different objects. It doesn't know, it doesn't care. It's like an octopus picking things up, and it works very, very well. So when you look at these items, these are exemplary items that you would see in e-commerce. So where is this in use today? So retail restaurants. Pizza, one of the biggest pizza companies in the world is also one of the biggest e-commerce companies in the world because we order through the app and we order online and they bring you fresh hot pizza. How do they do it? They have little factories, they make dough 24 hours a day, they do daily deliveries of fresh unfrozen dough. No one wants to work in a 40 degree refrigerated warehouse packing dough. Trust me on this one. And so they were working for two and a half years to get a robot to pick up a ball of freshly kneaded pizza dough. Um, they called us, we were able to do it. Nine factories, we're about to build the 10th for them, United States, Europe, and Japan. Now, I can't tell you who it is, but I can tell you if you Google Wall Street Journal Domino's CEO, there'll be a very interesting picture in that um, article that will look similar to something you're hearing today. Fast fashion. I buy five t-shirts, I try on, I keep the one I like, the other four go back in the bag. We all do this. What happens? Somebody's got to take those t-shirts, those jeans, all that high value apparel and resort it in your returns and get it back into inventory. What this technology today is doing 3PL returns for a, a fast fashion e-commerce um, supplier. So one of the interesting things, as I mentioned, Dr. Whitesides invented this. He called me and said, Carl, I think I've got something here. You know a little bit about robots. I said, I think you've unlocked the holy grail, but it took us a good three years. It, it, is very simple, it works very simple, but to get an octopus-like tentacle to talk to an industrial robot and doing it at speed, precision, for millions and millions and billions and billions of cycles was very, very difficult. So there's a lot of hard work in manufacturing, there's a lot of hard work in control it, but just like an iPad, a three-year-old can use it, they can use it because there's a lot of technology and a lot of thought goes into it. So now the second thing you should ask is, this is a robot demo, okay, Carl, there's sensors here, you've trained this up, you probably spent some time deep learning. We know how this works. We can read everything. We know what Jeff Bezos said. So I need a volunteer somewhere in the audience who has something that is no bigger than this with them. Anyone? Anyone? Come on up. So can you please come on up? So come on over here. We're going to give you a microphone. All right, so Heather, come on over here and introduce yourself. You can just stand here so we don't block you. Hi, I'm Heather. <laughs> so awesome, Heather. So thank you for coming out. So have I seen this before? Have we met before? Is there any way I could have told the robot that you were going to bring a bottle of mouth mouthwash? Yes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Um, all right, why don't you just set it right there in that square? Is that set good? it a little off. Is that OK? What do you think, Harley? Give it a go. So we'll just turn the robot on and see what happens. Oh. You gotta yeah, move it over to the square there. <laughs> Sorry, the robot literally is very dumb and it just does all this stuff on its own. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about e-commerce, what is being sold in back to school 
and Amazon today and what is going to be sold in December are fundamentally different things. We don't have the time, we don't have the money, we don't have the technology to retrain for the, the seasonality, the cyclical, category, the, the variety of SKUs, whether we're running grocery, as you heard Mark Laurie talk about yesterday at Walmart, or we're shipping orders. So thank you so much, Heather. Really appreciate it. Thank you. you can, I'll take the mouthwash. Oh, yes. <laughs> we'll take your mouthwash back. Thank you. Thanks, sir. So thank you to Harley. As you can see, we also got some items from our sponsors through the door. Please visit them, uh, Birkenstock and the, uh, the, 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 the Fit for Fab gift box folks. Um, once again, this is so important. It's important to taking care of your customers, that customer-centric supply chain, being competitive and maintaining our business. So that's why we're talking about robots at Code Commerce. I'm Carl Voss from Self Robotics. This is Harley Green. Thank you so much.